This video is for ELEC 1510 Logic Design. This is Lecture 24, Video 1 on Programmable Logic Arrays, corresponding to Textbook Section 7.6. The reason why I'm doing these sections a little bit out of order is because the principles used in Programmable Logic Arrays are also used in designing ROM, read-only memory. So the structure of a very basic programmable logic array is given here. Programmable logic arrays are basically hardware devices that are used to synthesize just about any type of logical function that you could want. So what we have here are input variables, A, B, and C, that then go into, this is a type of inverter that is both a buffer and an inverter. So basically it takes an input signal x and will output x prime and x. That's just a different type of symbol for a buffer and an inverter that we haven't yet seen. We then have an array of connections, which I'll talk more about later, that are used to connect all of these variables and their complements together into product forms. So the product forms are then input into AND gates, which produces the products. Then we have another array right here of connections that are used to form sum of products expressions because we have OR gates. So you can take the product functions, add them together at the OR gates and produce sum of products. And then you have XOR gates along with 1 and 0. And you can use these to produce either the normal function, the sum of products, or the complement of the sum of products expressions. So I'm going to go through all of these steps in more detail in the following slides. So let's first analyze the very first chunk of the programmable logic array schematic. This is where we take the input variables and input them into the special buffers that produce a prime, a, b prime b and c prime and c as you can see now those are also given down here at the bottom because the wires are just connected there okay so now we have access to all of our variables and all of the complements as columns and those hit these horizontal lines that are input to and gates and this terminology is a little bit different than the terminology that we've seen before which is that basically any time there's a connection formed between a column and a row, which we usually designate using an X, that means that that column line is, is one of the inputs to the AND gate. So if we have, say, the X that I already drew, there's an A prime, and let's put some other X's there too, A prime B C. So these technically are actually six different wires, all input to the AND gate, but not all of them are always connected. However, just to draw it more simply, we only draw a single wire just so that we don't inundate ourselves with wires in the drawing. Then the connections can be formed with X's. So again, I drew A prime B C as the first product term that's formed. Now let's create some other product terms, say a, b prime. Let's do b, c prime. And let's do a, b, c prime. So now let's say that we just had a logic function that needed these uh, product terms or say multiple logic functions that needed these product terms. Now this is the structure that's used to create those product terms. Now something that is worth talking about is how these junctions are actually formed. So we have the columns and then we have the rows. So what actually happens is the manufacturer of the programmable logic array will put something resembling a fuse in between those two lines. And then there's actually a jumper so that they're not actually connected. Now a fuse is an element that's normally a short circuit, but you can destroy the fuse by applying too much voltage or current to it. 
So what you do is every time you don't want a connection, say right here, uh, the second row and uh, variable C, you would put a whole ton of voltage on that connection. So you would apply very high voltage to C and you would apply ground to the output of this gate and that would destroy this fuse. It would, it would be destroyed and that would now be an open circuit and it wouldn't be connected. So the way that these programmable logic arrays are made is that a manufacturer will produce all of this functionality with fuses between all of these connections and then it's up to the designer to decide which fuses they actually want to keep and which ones they want to destroy and create open circuits for. However, when we're designing circuits using programmable logic arrays, graphically we're just going to draw X's where the connections are supposed to be between the rows and the columns. All right, so now let's look at the second part of the programmable logic array design. We had stopped right about here with product terms that are output as horizontal rows. So I had A prime B C, A B prime B C prime and A B C prime as my different product terms. Now these product terms can act as inputs to OR gates right here to create sum of product terms. So let's say now I create three connections right here. My first sum of products term will be A prime B C, that was the first connection, or A B prime, that's the second connection, or B C prime. And forgive me if these functions can be simplified algebraically. Um, I didn't plan out making these as efficient as possible, so there could be some algebraic simplification there, I'm not sure. Now for the second one, uh, let's just say that we put two x's here and here, and now the output sum of products term at the second OR gate is going to be the sum of those two product terms, a prime b c or a b C prime. So now we can use all of our, the structure that we've developed so far to create sum of product terms at the output of those OR gates. Okay, so now we've worked our way up to right here where we have columns that are acting as sum of product terms. Now those are input to XOR gates that produce the output functions F1 and F2. So let's call the output from this OR gate Z sub 1 because that will eventually create F sub 1 and from the other OR gate Z sub 2 that will eventually create F sub 2. So now I can create connections between the 0 and the 1 used as the other input to the XOR gate. For example, if I create a connection right here, then F2 is going to be Z to exclusive or zero, which is then going to be Z to zero prime or Z to prime zero. So obviously the zero term goes away. Zero prime is one and I just get Z two at the output. So that connection didn't do anything. Using the zero as the connection just gives you the sum of products term at the output. However, now let's say that for F1, I create a connection between the one and the second input to the XOR gate. So now I've got F1 is equal to Z1 exclusive or one, which means that it's going to be Z1 one prime or z1 prime 1. Since 1 prime is 0, this term goes away and I just get z1 prime, which means that I'm complementing the entire sum of products term that I got at the output right here. So this whole structure right here can just be used to complement the entire sum of products expression. Sometimes that can lead to a simpler implementation or a more efficient programmable logic array implementation. So let's look at the entire structure of the programmable logic array again, just to piece it all together. 
we have our input variables. We have the buffer inverter structure that creates the buffered versions of the input variables and their complements. We have an array of connections that are used to create product terms along with these AND gates. The output from the AND gates are the product terms that then are input to OR gates used to create sum of product expressions right here. And then the XOR structure at the very end is used to either complement or not complement those sum of product expressions. So programmable logic arrays are big, big generic devices that can be used by destroying fuses um, in order to create basically any logic function that you want. So you wouldn't have to design all of the logic functionality yourself using a programmable logic array. You would just have to go through and destroy all of the fuses for the connections in there that you don't want. So certain manufacturers make programmable logic arrays and then certain applications companies would actually go through and basically program or destroy the fuses of the connections that they don't want in order to get these to work the way that they do want. This basic structure is going to be used in ROM or read-only memory, so we'll talk about that in the next lecture video.